Hi, this is Lady Lex UK, and this is a Dreams Gadget tutorial. Uh, today it's going to be a little different. We're going to do four gadgets because um, the next uh, lot of gadgets on our list are the gates, and they're all pretty much the same things with slight variants uh, of each other. So uh, we're going to do them all together as one. Um, so let's have a look. What have we got? We've got and gate. We've got the or gate. Uh, we've got an X or gate and we've got a not gate now I've no idea why these are not the same yellow um, as the rest of the uh, gadgets these are sort of this khaki green color maybe they did them first and didn't change the color or maybe they think these need to be something separate I don't know um, but here is uh, the, the four gates and um, what is a gate first of all um, I've already done a tutorial for the gates but um, as we're doing the whole gadget series um, it's probably a good idea to just uh, put them all in the same place so that we can all find them easily so um, right what is a gate um, a gate is uh, basically a question um, what it does is it analyzes what the inputs are and find out whether it's true or false. So you would wire things up to say whether they were sending signals of a uh, one. And this would analyze those signals to whatever type of gate it is and decide whether it was true or false to whatever it was uh, trying to, to question. And then it would send out a signal that was either true or false one or zero so an AND gate for example um, it would need um, a one signal from both of these inputs A and B and you can add up to 10 I think yeah you can add up to 10 to the AND gate um, so you can have up to 10 things that you can analyze and decide am I getting a single signal from all of those inputs if it is, it will send a signal of one. If it's not true, it will send a signal of zero. So an AND gate is looking to see if all of them are true. An OR gate is looking to see if any one of these is true or more than one. So it, either one of them can be true, both of them can be true, up to 10 again, um, or if neither of them are true, then it sends out a signal of zero. If, if both of them are true, it sends out a signal of one. If one of them is true, it sends out a signal of one. So that's an OR gate. So uh, one of them only needs to be, uh, but both of them can be. An XOR gate is the same, except only one of them can be. So if both of them were on, this would send a signal of false. Only one of these can be true. So this, you would use this if um, uh, you only wanted the situation to work if one of them was working. If both of them was working, you don't want it to happen. So that's what an XOR gate is. And here is a NOT gate. And this reverses any signal um, so that you put this between um, a signal and an output. So for example, um, let's use a trigger zone so here's a trigger zone um, and here's let's put a light in it's always good to have a, a light option there we go there's a light so we have a trigger zone so when when the trigger zone when the player is in the trigger zone it will turn on this light if I put a NOT gate in, it will turn on the light when the player is not in the trigger zone. So that's what a NOT gate does. So this is a very useful. It reverses the option. So uh, directly in, is he in the trigger zone, turn on the light. If you want the light to be on and uh, unless he's in the trigger zone, then you put a NOT gate between the two. There we go. 
extremely useful. And you can nest these things, so you can have not gates attached to and gates, etc, etc. And it, it can get quite complicated in terms of wiring and um, uh, making a microchip. But um, if you think of it slowly and, and progress through it quick, um, methodically, then you, you should be fine. Because it's pretty straightforward. You just got to think logically uh, and work your way through. Right. With that in mind, and here are all of our gates. Um, what I've built is something that I think might be useful. Let's go into play mode. Here is my character. Um, I have a, a combat animation. So when I press the square button, he will punch. But he's found a we weapon rack and in the weapon rack we have um, a hammer and a sword so if i pick up the sword i've now got a sword and when i press the square button i've now got an animation for the sword so um it's different now because uh, i've got a sword in my hand it's not punch anymore uh, and if i was to swap my sword for the hammer I've got another animation again with the hammer and then I can go and pick up the sword again. There we go. Uh, I didn't put an option to go back to um, the punch but um, you could do that as well. Right, let's have a look. Let's rewind him. Okay, so how is this done? Let's go into our puppet logic. There we have some uh, gadgets. We've got counters, we've got timelines, and we've got our AND gates. So I've got AND gates and an OR gate. I haven't used an XOR gate for, for this particular um, demonstration, but um, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure you now know what these things do, so um, it will be fine. Right. Um, let me just turn on invisible objects and now we can see that he is holding both the sword and the uh, hammer um, now you'd probably want to send this so when they're invisible they're also non-collidable so you don't have any issues with that um, so make your objects uh, invisible and non-collidable to start with um, so you put them in their hands don't, uh, and then go into their tweak menus. Um, hang on. No, I don't want that. Yeah, Megaton Hammer. Okay, so I'm going to make that um, uh, visible, invisible. So it's made it invisible to start with. And you've got sword that's also invisible. And I've attached a microchip to it and I've got a counter in there. So the counter is a one zero counter. So this is indicating whether or not um, I have it equipped. So if I got the hammer equipped, that's what that counter is indicating. If I've got the hammer equipped, then I have a keyframe which uh, changes the visibility if I go into, whoops. So what I did is I went into the hammer like this and I changed it so it is now visible. There we go. So let's just come out of there. Oh, we'll press record, it doesn't matter. Right, okay, so there's, there's our hammer. And we've also got a transmitter this is going to transmit to our player to tell him that we've got the hammer um, equipped so that it should do something um, different because it's got the hammer and we got the same in the sword so the sword has also got exactly the same situation but with it with the sword right so in our rack as our microchip okay these are both the same so I'll just show you um, the, the 
the code for the sword. So we've got a trigger zone. Now make sure these trigger zones do not overlap. Um, if they overlap, then you're, you're going to have all sorts of problems. So make sure they don't overlap. Um, make sure they're distinct from each other so that the um, you can only pick up one at a time. That's quite important. Right, so we got a trigger zone. And that's going into uh, a couple of AND gates. So first of all, we've got an AND gate here that's looking to see if uh, if the player is in the trigger zone. And there's a NOT gate here. Um, and this is the counter to say whether or not the sword has been picked up. So we're looking to see if it's not picked up. So... If you're in the trigger zone and it's not picked up, then it's going to show the text, pick up sword. Then we've got a controller sensor, which, rem which is remote, and we've got a triangle here. So it's looking to see if you press triangle, are you in the trigger zone and it's not yet been picked up. Uh, if that's true then it's going to add to this counter to say I'm being picked up. So this counter is now saying, right, OK, now what do we need to do? Um, I've been picked up. So first of all, it's got a keyframe that makes that sword invisible. And there is a uh, probably superfluous, actually. Um, the knot gate uh, makes the, the sword visible again. Um, so we've got invisible and visible and then we've got a wire that goes into our hammer and our sword let's open that back up again so you see that wire um, is going from the counter and it's uh, adding to adding to or removing from the sword. So this is pick up sword. So um, the counter is going to go um, f from zero to one because we've sent a link saying, okay, yes, I've picked it up, zero to one, um, equip the sword. And then there's another signal that is going to the hammer so in case you have the hammer equipped, that will unequip it. And it's a bit like this one here. So it's gone to the reset of that hammer. And it's reverse for the, for the hammer microchip. So it's make sure that one's turned on, one's equipped, and one's not. So that will reset that. So there we go. And that's what that's doing. So that's it. Um, the, we've got that knot gate there. Um, so you make sure that um, it hasn't been already equipped because we don't want to show the text um, without without a sword there when you're in the trigger zone. So um, that's that's why you have this knot gate here to check that out. So there you go. There's the pickup sword. I know it's a lot of gadgets and wires and things. I'm not very tidy, but hey, um, there we go. And you got the same in the hammer. And that is that. Now let's have a look at the animations and see how this works. So as we saw before, uh, we had a transmitter and we got the receivers here. So that one's looking for hammer and that one's looking for sword. So have I got the hammer equipped? Have I got the sword equipped? Here's our AND gates again. So we're looking to see uh, in this AND gate, have I pressed the square button? So am I activating an animation? And is the hammer equipped? If both of those are true, it's going to set off this counter, which sets off our hammer um, animation. So the hammer hit animation. When the hammer hit animation is finished on end trigger, we then reset the count. So we can press it again. And we've got the same with the sword. So the sword is looking to see, have I pressed the square button? Is the sword equipped? Turn on this counter, turn on the sword animation. Sword animation finished, resets the counter. And now this one, this is an OR gate. So I'm looking to see if either of these two are equipped. 
Uh, if none of them are equipped, so if the result is 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 not true, so if none of them are equipped, and you press the square button, then I'm going to set off this counter, which activates the punch animation because none of these are equipped. So. Um, you're unarmed and so that you've got a punch animation instead. So that's how I've done this. Um, I noticed some people do use selectors and things, but I'm trying to sort of demonstrate the and gates. So um, this is a way of, of demonstrating those, the and and the not and the or gates are all uh, in this tutorial. So um, before anybody tells me you could have used a selector and you could have done it. Yes, I know. Um, but I'm trying to demonstrate uh, the use of and gates and all gates and not gates and this was a really good way of doing that so there we go there is a pickup and animating um character i i think that's quite useful actually and I'd, i i'm i'm not even if i put a selector in um i would still need these counters i think so um i'll just be adding a selector in here and i don't think it's really necessary so um there we go uh I think this is fine. Hope that was useful. Thank you for watching. That has been the gates. I hope that's explained. If, if, if I haven't explained it enough, if you're still a little bit unsure about what gates are, there is a video um, entitled uh, Basics for uh, Non-Programmers, I think it's called. Um, I should have really before I started this video but um, uh, there is a the video that, that goes through these these gates uh, in there as well so thank you for watching and I'll catch you in your dreams